Hello guys, I'm Paul McWhorter and I'm here with lesson number 26 in our series of electronics and using the Arduino microcontroller. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about a lost art of wire wrapping. <clears throat> now why would we want to wire wrap something? Well, if you look at what we've done up until this point, we have worked on on uh, working with breadboards. And the nice thing about breadboards is you can get your circuit up and working real quickly. These wires are, these little jumper wires are really easy to plug in. That's the good news. The bad news is, is that they come out just as easily. And so while this is great for a desktop demonstration using a breadboard, Board. The problem is, is that if you try to deploy it in a real system like a, a robot or an unmanned aerial drone or a high altitude balloon, these wires would pop out very easily or if they shook around you wouldn't have a strong connection. So we need something better than this. Typically in a commercial company they would design a custom board and then solder the components into the board. The problem is, is that for most high school students or most home hobbyists that's a little bit too complicated, a little bit too expensive, plus we like to take our components out and reuse them for other projects. And so there really is a really ideal solution and that ideal solution is known as wire wrapping. And this is almost a lost art form. In fact, I couldn't even find the wire wrap tool that I use here, but I did uh, link to some other w equivalent wire wrap tools. If toptechboy.com and you can go to technology tutorials and you want to find lesson 26 and I show you some equivalent uh, some equivalent tools. A couple of things you'll need your wire wrap tool you'll need some special wire wrap wire and then you'll need a prototyping board okay and I link to kind of a pack of these prototyping boards that you can uh, you can get they're pretty pretty easy to find you could probably pick some up at Radio Shack if you uh, if you wanted to but with that, we can create a much more a much more secure uh, circuit implementation that we could actually deploy on something like a uh, something like a, uh, a high altitude balloon. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how to do this real quick. It's really very easy. We just need to plug our components. I'll probably start with the Arduino here. Uh, those those of you guys who have been following my lessons know that we are working on the Arduino Uno. And the thing is is that for something that we might want to deploy, it's really very nice to use the Arduino Nano. You program the Nano just like you do the Uno, only it's very much smaller and it's got nice pins that you can wire wrap to. So we're going to plug our uh, we're going to plug our Arduino Nano into our perf board or our uh, perforated board or our prototyping board. It goes by all those names. Now we're going to get our GPS and we're going to plug it in alongside, and then. The main thing with wire wrapping, actually the most hard thing is to make sure that you don't make mistakes because normally you're looking at the top side of the circuits and when you plug the the jumper wires in you can see the holes that you're plugging them into or the labels. Here we're going to be wire wrapping on the opposite side so as we wire wrap we're not seeing the label. So we got to make sure that we get it right. Let me show you how to just do one. We know from our earlier lesson that this VN pin needs to go to the 5 volts and so I need to run a wire from this pin to the 5 volts. So how do we do that? Well, I like to leave about an inch for wire wrapping on every side, on both sides, and so I need to make the wire two inches longer than I think I need, and so I'm going to go ahead and just make it a little bit longer. Uh, if I was doing, uh, just for the sake of time, if I was doing this for real on a circuit, I try to keep things pretty accurate and pretty short because uh, you know, it makes it easier to see where your wires are, but here I'm going to be a little bit sloppy and just use a little bit longer wire. Now on this, uh, uh, on the, on, on this particular tool, the wire, uh, the, the wire stripper is in the handle. On the more recent ones, and I think the ones I linked to, it's built into the tool itself. And so you just stick it in there, you pull it down and pull it out, and it strips it very nicely. This is one of the older fashioned ones. And what I've got to do, in fact, I'll try to show you, you can see that there's kind of a little blade in there. And so what I want is I want about an inch I want about an inch stripped off, and so that looks like about an inch. And then I put it like that, and then I just sort of pull it. And I didn't quite get it on that one, so I'll come back. That one broke. So let me try it again. Like I say, the ones on the more recent ones work a little better. 
there it goes. Okay, that's a nice inch that I got there. The ones that are mounted in the tool just work a little better, but you can get used to using either one of these. And so I'll come in, I'll get about another inch, pull it down against the blade. Didn't quite get it. Okay, there you go. That's a nice inch as well. Okay, and so you can see that I got the wire stripped off an inch on each end. Okay, now to do the wire wrapping. This is the critical part on any tool that you use. And I need to put this circuit up here so it has something to focus on so the camera will focus. Okay, but what I want you to look at is inside this tool. And inside this tool in the center, you can see that there's a large hole in the center. And then all of them have that large hole and all of them also have a little notch like a little notch to the side of that hole. When you put that this wire in it, you don't want it to go in the center hole. You want to go to that little notch or that small hole to the side. And so I know for this one, I can see that it's up at the top. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to go into there up at the top. Okay. And then again, I'm sorry that this isn't focusing real well. Let me see if I can Okay, so you see now I'm sticking this in. I stick it all the way in up to the insulation. Okay, and so I get it all the way in up to the insulation into that side notch. Okay, now I'm going to come in and I know it's the second one over. Okay, and so it's the second one over and I come and I put this on top of that pin in the center hole. Okay, get it down on top of it on the center hole. Then I like to hold the wire with my thumb so the wire doesn't move around. And then I just turn it. Okay, and I just continue to turn it until that wire is all the way wrapped around it. Oh, and that is a beautiful wire wrap. Let me see how close I can get that for you to see. Okay, so you see that wire is just securely on there. I can tug on it, and it is really on there securely. Okay, that's a good view. There it is. You see that is just wrapped on there just absolutely perfectly. Okay, now I know on this one, again, the thing I got to be careful of is where does it go to? It goes over four. One, two, three, four. Four down is the five volts. And so I'm going to go ahead and load my tool up again. So I come in and I put it in that notch. Being careful to not be in the center, but be in the notch. Okay, get it all the way in up to the insulation. Okay, and now I'm going to turn it over and it was to come down four. So I come one, two, three, four. All right, and then I put it down on there again with my finger. I'm going to hold it where that wire won't spin around on the outside and then I'm just going to spin it. Okay, and with about an inch of wire, you got to spin it. 10, 11 times probably. Okay, and look at that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All wrapped on there. Okay, so now I've got two nice connections wrapped there and wrapped there. And that's going to be very, very secure. Okay, a couple of things that you just want to be careful of is you really want to look and make sure that, that you don't have an uninsulated part of wire uh, coming off that could short out with the adjacent uh, with the adjacent pins. Okay, and you can see on this one the insulation goes right up to and touches that pin. If I had an uninsulated region hanging off here, then that could short out on that pin. So you want to make sure that you're not ending up with dangling parts of non-insulated wire that could short out. So you really want to make sure that you wrap such that that insulated part comes all the way up to the pin. And it might take a little practice, but just look at it and if it doesn't if it doesn't look good, go back and take it off. You can see that
one looks real good and that one looks real good. And so what I would do is I would just continue on and make the other connections. And then when I'm done, I would have a board that I could put on something that's going to have very, very secure connections. Again, the other nice thing about wire wrapping is, is that my little nano, if I want to use it at a different project, I can always come in and take the wire wrap off and I can reuse, uh, reuse my components. So hope you guys will give this a try. I don't want to discourage you from building your own custom boards, but uh, for a lot of people, it's just a lot easier to have a roll of wire around a wire wrapping tool and a perf board, and then you can just at the spur of the moment uh, 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 build up your own prototypes if you want. Okay, Paul McWhorter, uh, I'll be coming back with lesson number 27, and I think in lesson number 27, we'll go ahead and build this thing out with the pressure sensor and with the SD card to kind of make a nice little, a nice little instrument package. So you guys tune back in for lesson number 27.